WISC-TV in Madison, Wisconsin. This is News 3 with Ted O'Connor. Good evening. A 15-year-old Mineral Point boy sits in a Kansas City jail tonight, suspected of murdering his father, mother, and younger brother. News 3's Carla Wool has the details. No one knew anything was wrong at the Zimmer's Rural Mineral Point home until late last night when the Iowa County Sheriff's Department received a phone call from a guidance counselor in Wakanda, Illinois, the Zimmer's hometown until about two months ago. The counselor asked the sheriff to check in on the Zimmer's. Uh, he had uh, received a report from a student that uh, a friend of his had informed him that he was going to do away with his mother and dad and steal his car and run away. Soon after officers arrived, they discovered the body of 48-year-old Hans Zimmer lying in a pool of blood here on the back porch. An autopsy shows he'd been shot five times. Upstairs, officers found the mutilated body of 10-year-old Perry Zimmer. He'd been stabbed about 20 times. And in a tool shed in the backyard, they found 44-year-old Sally Zimmer, also stabbed about 20 times. Officials estimate the time of death at after 5 Monday evening. Early this morning, Iowa County began the search for the main suspect in the case, the only other member of the Zimmer family, a 15-year-old son. He was arrested through the uh, efforts of the Kansas City Police Department when he attempted to use a uh, credit card that was made out to his dead mother. The youth was arrested at the Century Inn in Kansas City. He was traveling in his father's car. In the car, officers found six handguns. Right now, we're trying to cooperate with the Iowa County authorities and our juvenile authorities in trying to determine if there's probable cause to detain the 15-year-old for hearing. Probable cause is found. Iowa County authorities will try to issue a warrant for the arrest of the 15-year-old, and extradition proceedings will start then. As the youth sits in the juvenile detention center in Kansas City tonight, the main question that remains unanswered for officers in Wisconsin and Missouri filling in the grisly details is the motive. Everyone now is asking why. Carla Wohl, News 3. People who know the suspect are asking themselves that same question tonight as news of the incident today shocked three communities. More on that from News 3's Mary Carr. A 15-year-old relative went to three different high schools during this his freshman year. He began at Madison's Holy Name Seminary, but withdrew because of grade problems. The youth then moved back to Wakanda, Illinois, and attended a public school, where a guidance counselor remembers him as a student without any major problems. You know, he was a, a nice-looking young man. Um, he was uh, liked by the kids, didn't have any peer problem at all. Uh, academically, uh, an average student. Uh, when my kids at school here heard the story, they're all astounded as, as was I. He is not somebody that you would expect uh, to be charged with this type of a crime. That same sentiment was expressed in Mineral Point today, where the suspect attended high school during the last two months. Guidance counselor John Hebel saw the youth just this past Monday and had no inkling anything was wrong. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. But, uh, I never even really saw him down. He always seemed to be pretty cheery and happy and things like that. As the crime's investigation continues, the shock that it may have been committed by a schoolmate remembered as happy-go-lucky now sets in at three separate schools. Mary Carr, News 3. A major drug bust in Rock County early today. Police officials say those arrested are not just casual users, many are large quantity dealers. News 3's Joel Despain is standing by live in our Rock County Bureau with details. Joel? More arrests are still to be made, but at this point at least 97 people have been arrested. That number is expected to climb to well over 100 when the investigation concludes. One of the last official undercover operations before the bust was a drug purchase we filmed last night. Over the past nine months, eight undercover narcotic officers of the Rock County Metro Squad have spent well over $20,000 buying drugs and setting up dealers in a highly secret investigation. At 3.30 this morning, the drug roundup is ready to begin. Rock County Sheriff's deputies, Janesville and Beloit police officers assemble for what could be this county's largest drug bust. <laughs> Yeah, okay. 
Shortly after four, the action begins. The defendants are taken by surprise. Many are not even dressed. It really is. The people being arrested are alleged dealers. Police claim many have been making thousands of dollars selling pot, cocaine, and pills. Not only are the people cuffed and taken away, but so are the vehicles believed to be used in the distribution of controlled substances. From their homes, the defendants are taken downtown to either Beloit or Janesville. They are processed, frisked, and put into cells. At a news conference later in the morning, Rock County officials told of the combined effort that made the investigation a success. We couldn't do anywhere near what was accomplished uh, without the cooperative effort that that's been taking place. It would be virtually impossible for us to uh, manpower-wise or uh, money-wise. There was not a high quantity of drugs, weapons, and related paraphernalia taken in the massive arrest, nor was there supposed to be. The intent was just to get dealers off the street. Defendants made initial appearances this afternoon. Half were charged in the Beloit courthouse, the other half in Janesville. Most are charged with delivery of a controlled substance. Although this was the peak of the investigation, officials say there are still many more warrants to serve. That may take a couple of weeks because many of the suspects have now moved to other states. Ted? <laughs> could be the best time to make your best deal on an 83 Toyota truck. Your Toyota dealer's got 14 tough models. Every one is the same price as the 82s, except diesel, its price went down. The Toyota Standard Truck, the lowest priced Toyota truck, has the same powerful gas engine, three across seating, same big payload as Toyota's other two buys. Don't let your Toyota truck get away. Make your deal now. Your Toyota dealer's got it right. Let's call Grandpa. Oh, okay. Oh, let's wait until 5. At 5 p.m. weekdays, direct dial rates drop 35% for in-state calls and 40% for out-of-state calls, so you can talk longer, more often. And people are so anxious to get these discounts, they'll go to great lengths to be first on the phone. Oh, sorry, Dad. Remember the time lower rates arrive. Everybody's reaching out and calling after 5. To increase your painting ability, rely on the ability of painting accessories from True Value hardware stores. You can depend on Werner aluminum ladders for steady support. Fill in holes and cracks with GE silicone caulk. Cover large areas quickly and thoroughly with this Wagner paint sprayer. Then give trim a smooth finish with True Test Orel brushes. And to paint with fewer drips, get this Easy Painter pad from participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. Union officials hope a last-minute round of negotiations with Madison Gas and Electric officials can thwart a strike that could hit that Madison-based utility at midnight. MG&E's contracts with two unions expired at the end of April, and while those contracts have been extended four times, the two sides continue to disagree on wages, work rules, and health benefits. 257 MG&E employees are represented by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 2304, and Local 39 of the Office of Professional Employees International Union. Contract bargaining has been ongoing since mid-March. An MG&E spokesperson, Dick Lawrence, said late today the company could not respond to the union strike talk. It's also not known what effect, if any, a strike would have on the utility's customers. If you hadn't balanced your checkbook for 14 months, you'd probably hear from your bank. Well, apparently, Dane County Treasurer Robert McDermott hasn't balanced the county's checkbook for that length of time, and he's heard from County Executive Jonathan Berry, who, at a cost of about $6,000 to the taxpayers, has sent in an outside accounting firm to whip McDermott's books into shape. One county supervisor, Lynn Hainan, is so upset over that fall-up, she says McDermott, who's elected, ought to be recalled. McDermott faces re-election next year. He says it's not his fault. The long-awaited and much ballyhooed film, The Return of the Jedi, opened at 900 theaters across the country earlier today, including the Orpheum here in Madison. And as was the case all over the nation, long lines of Star Wars fans waited to see the third of the Star Wars series. News 3 traveler Mark Kane was in that line this morning. Here's what he found. May the Force be with us. The Force is with Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia and Chewbacca and the rest of the Star Wars clan. They're streaking across America again. 
Return of the Jedi, the third film in the Star Wars series, opened at 900 theaters across America today. Madison's first showing was at 10.30 this morning. 450 is the going ticket price. That's about a dollar more than movies normally are, but money doesn't seem to matter. It's science fiction. It's worth more than that. Some 600 people paid the four and a half bucks for the first showing here. That's about a third of the theater's capacity. Point at the deck! Ah! It's a trap! Fighters coming in. Two hours and ten minutes later, the Madison premiere was over. The line for the second show was already forming. Some couldn't wait to get in. It was space fever. And the reaction from this less than objective group was predictable. Pretty darn good. Great, I loved it. The little bears were the best. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was. It was really good. If you don't want to brave the lines and other evils, theater management expects Jedi to play through the summer. Another Star Wars summer in Madison. Here's the terminal. R2, where are you? Mark Kane, News 3, traveling in Madison. Going? What do you mean you're going? <laughs> going where are you? Going where? Oh, this is no time for heroics. Come back! Watch yourself, Wedge. Three from above. Red 3, Red 2, pull in. Life is apparently passing me by. I just saw Star Wars three days ago. I'm way behind, aren't I? I got to put up here. Good heavens. I thought Jedi was a jam of some sort. I... <laughs> Here's today's yes. high and low. I'll well, be back with the rest of the weather details right after this. The competition has come to almost fear our old Cutlass. What could be tougher than competing with old Cutlass? Now there are two Cutlasses. Our test drive will show you why Cutlass is America's favorite two cards. Cutlass Supreme with old comfort, resale among the highest of any midsize. Cutlass Sierra, front wheel drive, classic European styling. What could be tougher than two old Cutlasses? Two Cutlasses at prices like these. Check your newspaper. The old Sierra Council. Manticolor's most popular exterior paint is now half price at Shopco. Wood and aluminum siding latex semi-gloss, warranted to cover in one coat, now just $9.49 a gallon. Protect house and trim flat latex, guaranteed one coat coverage, fade and stain resistant, now just $8.99 a gallon. And floor, porch, and patio, interior or exterior latex with durable low gloss finish, now $7.99 a gallon. Magicolor paint, now half price during Shopco's summer sale. The landscape of your laundry, it's splattered with stains, grass, blood. Today, there's a laundry detergent that gets them out, New Era Plus. The plus is protein, because many tough stains are made of protein, and protein gets out protein stains, grass, blood, and many more. Nothing gets out every stain, but New Era Plus gets out some of the toughest with the surprising cleaning power of protein. First off, some old business. We did have some rain showers move through the area yesterday. In fact, there were some thunderstorms embedded in that area of rain. Now, precipitation amounts weren't anything to write home about. The heaviest from central Wisconsin, Wausau just under half an inch, to Wisconsin Rapids just under an inch, to Dubuque with just over half an inch. Across the rest of the state, well, almost all of it saw some rain, but most of it was under around a quarter of an inch as far as precipitation amounts, and no rain is in the forecast for the next 24 to 36 hours. Currently in Madison, not a bad evening out, though. A little on the cool side. Temperature 59 degrees. We have north winds at 16. Our humidity is 33%. Our barometer 30 inches even and falling. And skies are sunny. 
Across the nation, the storm system responsible for our rain showers now to the east of us and producing some rain in the upper Ohio Valley to southern New England. Farther westward along this front, some more showers and thunderstorms showing up in the southwest from west Texas into New Mexico, and that's where the heaviest precipitation is occurring this evening. High pressure, however, is moving southward from Canada. With it, some rather brisk northerly winds brought in some rather cool air, and temperatures throughout the upper Midwest were only in the 50s and 60s by late this afternoon. Now, as this high settles right over us by tomorrow morning, it's going to be very chilly throughout the state of Wisconsin. Frost freeze warnings go in effect for tonight, and overnight low temperatures are expected to dip to near freezing. As far as the satellite picture is concerned, you can see one of the reasons for what we expect to be a rather chilly evening. The cloud cover that we have been having for the past day, well to the south of us in the Ohio Valley, and farther southward, those blotches in parts of Texas and New Mexico are the thunderstorms that have been occurring in that area. But for the Midwest, for our region, clear skies, very dry air, and light winds. It's going to be a rather cool evening. Forecast map for tomorrow shows this high moving eastward, so at least one more nice day out of it. And as it continues to move farther to the east, a subtly return full behind it will bring us temperatures in the 60s to low 70s for both tomorrow and on Friday. On Friday, however, another storm system is going to develop and move our way, so certainly some clouds and the possibility for some showers. Well, that's Friday. I'm cautiously optimistic about the weekend. Another high pressure system up to the north of us will be moving our way. It comes off the Pacific. That means some mellow temperatures, at least going into the Memorial Day weekend. Of course, we'll know more by tomorrow. Forecast details shape up like this for the near term. Tonight, a frost freeze warning is in effect. If you have some delicate plants outside, consider covering them. Clear and cold overnight low, near freezing, light and variable winds. For tomorrow, Sunny and a bit warmer, high in the mid-60s, south winds 10 to 15. And on Friday, some clouds and a chance for showers, highs in the low 70s. That's the way it looks, Ted. Once again, okay. we'll know more about the Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend yes. tomorrow. You're getting ahead of yourself again. Only Thank a little. You. Right. A European flavor developed during that two-day Great Lakes Governor's Economic Summit in Cleveland, Ohio, that ended today. The six states participating will try to develop a common market approach to regional economic development. How that might work from News 3's Bill Clausius. As he returned from Cleveland this afternoon, Governor Tony Earl hardly appeared to be the leader of a common market style region. But that's what governors from six states surrounding the Great Lakes want. A coherent economic voice that will benefit each state. These states have more economic and industrial power than, say, West Germany or France. Earl says the approach is necessary or ought to be clear that we are our own best customers. The Midwest states are the greatest traders with one another. And as we uh, go as a region, we go as individual states. So that if uh, Caterpillar does well in, uh, in Illinois, and if uh, U.S. Steel does well in Indiana, and grade trading d does well from Minnesota, we're going to benefit concomitantly from that. So it's in our individual interest to promote the regional interest. The agreement is not to take business away from each other, but to promote the Great Lakes region pool political clout through Washington lobbyists and congressional delegations, promote regional tourism and international trade, protect the Great Lakes from states that need a fresh water supply, and construct university and business partnerships. It's the intention of the Great Lakes governors to construct a 10-year plan plotting the economic future of the Great Lakes region. The governors will meet again June 24th on Mackinac Island with her Washington lobbyists. They hope to put together a set of regional positions on selected federal policies. Bill Clausius, News 3, The Capitol. Shopco wants to talk to you about saving money during our sight and sound sale. This Cobra one-piece telephone is just $10.99. A thin phone from Teleconcept in ivory or brown, only $44.99. And this 100-foot cordless phone from Cobra is $79.99. They have memory redial and a mute button. Installation's easy. Plug them in. Basic to decorator style, Shopco's your telephone headquarters. And we guarantee quality phones and accessories for less. Ford Escort. We made it with four-wheel independent suspension for a big car ride. We made it with front-wheel drive for traction. We made it with an efficient CVH engine. We made Escort very roomy and fun to drive. Day in and day out. And we made it in America. You, in turn, helped make Ford Escort the best-selling car in the world. 9.9 .9 financing now at your Wisconsin Upper Michigan Ford dealers. 
I have to admit it's frustrating having a bladder control problem. Because my real problem is finding the protection I need. You need Depend for discreet, effective protection. This form-fitting Depend undergarment works so well because of a fluid locking layer. Watch how this remarkable layer actually locks fluid in and won't let go. The name says it all. Depend. Discreet, effective protection. It's all over for dandelions when homeowners apply triple tonic to their lawns. With one easy application, triple tonic takes dandelions out and puts fertilizer and other vital nutrients back in. To give you a thick, green, healthy lawn you can be proud of. Triple Tonic from Northrop King. The leader in new ideas for lawn care. Well, try as they may, they won. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> Milwaukee tried to give it away this afternoon, but they hung on to finally beat the A's. Moose Haas gets the win. Tom Kellman earns his third save of the year. Let's go to Oakland for a look at this wild one. In the third, Milwaukee scored their first run. Jim Gantner aboard with a triple scored on Medio single to left. In the same inning, Cecil Cooper launches his seventh homer of the season. Over the fence and right, a two-run shot, 3-0 Milwaukee. Moving to the fifth, Charlie Moore teed off against losing pitcher Tom Underwood for his first four-bagger of the season. It was a solo shot. The Brewers led 4-1. The fifth definitely got wilder in the home half. Oakland base runners fell asleep at the wheel, and the Brewers almost got a very unusual double play. But Ned Yost threw to the wrong base, and they came up with nothing. Given a second chance, the A's took advantage of it in that same inning as Wayne Gross loops a double down the line in left field that scored lead foot and big foot. That are the, those are the two base runners on base, and that ties the game at four. In the seventh, Milwaukee scores three times. The first came in on an infield out. Their last two runs scored on a Robin Yount triple to right. Oakland tried to make it interesting as Gross ripped a two-run ninth inning homer, but they ran out of miracle finishes, and the Brewers go on to win it. The final margin, 7-6. to six. In other American League scores this afternoon, the Mariners, the Brewers' next opponent, docked the Indians. In the National League at Shea Stadium, George Bamberger's Mets lost a slugfest to the Giants, 7-6. But the real story in this game is manager Frank Robinson came to the mound to remove Jim Barr. The fireworks started. Robinson wasn't too pleased with the way Barr tossed the ball to him. And then he ordered Barr back to the mound to chew him out. Judging by the look of things, it was a one-sided conversation. And one of the National League final, Daryl Porter, smacked a two-run homer as the cards cut the Reds. In case you missed it last night, the Brewers lost 8-7. It's been a weird series anyway. Maybe a full moon had something to do with it. With a score tied at 7 and the 8th, Oakland tried the suicide squeeze. Mike Davis misses on the bunt, but Yost couldn't handle the pitch. And Billy Allman crosses the plate with a winning run. <laughs> For the really big savings, there's only one place to go tomorrow, Gimbel's Coupon Sale. It's Gimbel's famous Memorial Day Coupon Sale. Look for 100 money-saving Gimbel's coupons in your newspaper, including bonus coupons good for Thursday only. Clip all the coupons and use them Thursday in just about every department throughout the store. Remember, get your Gimbel's coupons in your newspaper and bring them with you to Gimbel's tomorrow for incredible savings. Special coupon hours Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Don't miss the first day of the Memorial Day Coupon Sale tomorrow at Gimbel's. The final day for 9.9% .9 financing is May 31st from your South Central Wisconsin Chevrolet dealer. That's right, a 9.9% .9 interest rate on Chevy Chevettes, Citations, Cavaliers, and S10 pickups. Dealers are geared up to make outstanding deals, plus save you hundreds of dollars with 9.9% .9 financing. But do it before May 31st at your South Central Wisconsin Chevrolet dealer. Uh, just half a cup. Caffeine, you know. But this is new brim decaffeinated coffee. New brim? Now there's a new rich roasted taste that really satisfies new brim. Mmm. It tastes this rich. Fill it to the rim. Try the new rich roasted taste of brim. Former Illinois quarterback Tony Eason opted for the NFL as opposed to an offer from the USFL. The 
Illini record setter agreed to a four-year, $2.2 million contract with the New England Patriots. Eason set or tied nine NCAA passing records in just two seasons with the Illini. It's squash, the sport, not the vegetable. Stu Hoffensperger has more on the sport and one of the best players in the area. When Doug Fuller wants to relax from the grind of classes at the University of Wisconsin, he seeks refuge in a white-walled room at Nielsen Tennis Stadium. He plays squash. While you're out there, all your energies are concentrated on that little ball. And you can forget about all the other little difficulties in the world. The refuge has turned into a throne since Doug's victory in crowning as Wisconsin state champion. I kind of expected that one of these years I was going to make the breakthrough. And I was hoping it would be this year. And I was kind of aiming from the end of last season uh, to win the state championship. No, you Doug picked up the game from his father, a national caliber player in Terrytown, New York. He was 13 at the time, and with the exception of a two-year interruption because of an injury, he's been playing ever since. You really need to have a lot of discipline, self-discipline, because it is an individual sport. It's not a team sport. There aren't other guys on the team who can push you and say, come on, you're lazy today. You got to go out there every day regardless. All that practice could pay a big dividend, according to coach and playing partner, Stefan Tunberg. For sure, he's going to be able to be a teaching pro, that's for sure. But you don't know if he's going to be among the top 10 in the nation. No one knows that. But Doug plans to find out and plans to move east next year in search of stronger competition and maybe a national title. Stu Hoppensberger, News 3 Sports. Anglers are always looking for tips to catch more fish. Bay Winkleman offers just this advice on how to do that. Even though this may not look edible to you and I, the safety pin spinnerbait really excites big fish. Bass love them, northerns love them, and sometimes you can even pull the walleye on these things. One of the real beauties of this lure is that it's virtually snag-proof, so you can cast it into the lily pads, stumps, and reeds. Early in the season, a smaller spinnerbait with a single blade will be most productive. But as the water warms, you'll want to try bigger baits with larger blades. They come with either single or tandem blades. Depending on the mood of the fish, you might consider adding some dressing. Sometimes a piece of pork rind or a plastic grub will be all it takes to get their attention. The ways to fish a spinnerbait are limited only by your imagination. You can use a straight swimming retrieve, but if that doesn't work, try fluttering it with a stop and go retrieve. At times, letting it helicopter down to the bottom. Now with a tandem model, you can easily buzz it across the surface. Big fish turn on the spinnerbaits, and so should you. Hey, good fishing. And winners at the French Open today included Jimmy Connors, John McEnroe, Martina Navratilova, Chris Everett Lloyd. And in McEnroe's victory of five-hour marathon, he kicked the photographer's camera near the court. He's just getting ready for Wimbledon. <laughs> Ted, sports quiz time. Yes. Named the only American League park in which there were fewer than 100 homers hit 1982. I'll try Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Nope. Oh. Got to go with Chicago's <laughs> Comiskey Park of all places. Ball doesn't carry that well there. I'm in a slump, just like Gorman Thomas. <laughs> Back in a moment. We're making men's suits here. Thousands in different fabrics and styles, every size. We're Kuppenheimer, and retailers would sell our clothes at markups that are as much as 100% or more. But you don't have to pay that price for famous Kuppenheimer quality. You can go to your Kuppenheimer factory outlet store, buy superbly tailored suits, sport coats, and slacks direct from us, eliminate the big markups, and keep the savings for yourself. Located at 3531 East Washington Avenue, Madison. Shop Go Summer Sale has savings for your active life. Save on an AM FM headphone radio on sale for $8.99. And for your on-the-run lifestyle, Shopco has men's and ladies jogging shorts on sale for $1.99 cool summer tank tops for only $2.99. And for little sports, Shopco has shorts for just $1.79. Savings for summer fun from Shopco Summer Sale. Say hello to a goodbye at Shopco. Steenberg's Giant Mobile Home Expo, the largest mobile home inventory ever assembled in Wisconsin this Memorial Weekend. Steenberg, Highway 13 North of Wisconsin Dells. Be there. That's our report at 6. Family Feud follows. John Karcher has more news tonight at 10. Have a good evening.
see news happening, call the News 3 hotline, 273-3333. Enjoy.